Hi, I'm Brad at Display Week. And I'm both sorry but also excited to say this video will be, again, mostly talking about micro OLED displays. Right before I came to this event, I noticed that on BOE, who is a big large Chinese display manufacturer, updated their ARVR page to show different displays they have available for samples or even mass production. They include such displays as the one is in the Quest Pro, but on the more interesting side of the spectrum, they have some new micro OLED displays. And when I saw the specs, I quickly got pretty excited. They were showcasing a around 4K by almost 4K 1.3 inch micro OLED display for VR. Not only that, they were saying it was going to be 5,000 nits of brightness, which is probably the good starting point for what you would need for a somewhat bright, good experience for a high FOV uh, VR headset. I was really hopeful that I would be able to see this display at the event since they literally updated it right before, and I was not disappointed. As soon as I entered the hall, the first booth that kind of greeted me was the BOE booth. And I walked up there, they had a whole metaverse section. Yeah, they're still calling it that. And they were proud to show off every display they had for the VR stuff was all 4K per eye. Even if they weren't all the exact same. Now they had three different demos for that single micro OLED panel. However, it seemed to be an earlier version of what they were giving samples to based on their website. All of these panels seem to be running at only a thousand nits, which clearly means they're probably a single stack white OLED, no micro lens arrays, no dual stack, no other magic going on there. But even with that in mind, the actual basis for the backplane and the display processing are all there and can be made better for the product that they're advertising on their website. And the first demo I got to try was a very simple optics test bench. One single eye, one single optic in front of the display, you peer your eye through and you see some images. And these images, wow. I don't think I've ever really experienced any optics test bench where I really could not see any screen door effect or any aliasing of edges at all. This was probably the first time where I looked into something and felt the actual visuals just by terms of resolution was getting eerily close to real life. In fact, that's why I said to the booth person that was there, I was like, this, this doesn't even look like I'm looking at a display anymore. It looks almost real. And they were laughing and saying, yeah, we know. The display also has a 90% DCI P3 rating. Most of the displays that are out right now, um, they're not HDR, they're not 10 bit, and they're not even close to that sort of color contrast, let alone without the OLED blacks. Most displays are, especially LCD displays, are not even near the DCI spectrum. They're, they're still in the NTSC around 70%. So the colors were really good. And the contrast value is, of course, it's OLED, micro OLED, is 100,000 plus or greater to one. Now, the first thing that people will say is, well, that was just a single optics test bench. They didn't put in a headset. What does that mean? Well, they did put in the headset. They had one that was actually fully standalone. Uh, it didn't have the best tracking. It was obviously a very basic kind of 3D OF headset, but you're able to put this small headset on with those dual 4K OLED micro OLED displays, look around, and again, it looked really good despite the processing power in it not really rendering much. They just played some videos over and over, and it, 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 again, it still looked really good, even though this was clearly not as bright as they should be because these are, again, lower nits than what they're advertising on their website, at least for the show floor. And the final demo from them with that display was even more impressive. They had an extremely thin optics profile around the same FOV as the big screen beyond, around that 90 degrees all around, but with that 4K per eye display. And it was, it looked good. Again, it had really good clarity. The edge to edge uh, was a little bit lesser than the other sort of optics test benches they had there. But again, that display was really doing the heavy lifting to giving me what seemed like a really good immersive experience. And I can imagine even looking at text through the headset would look pretty great. They had one more 4K per eye display that was totally different than the other three I just mentioned, since those were all using basically the same display. But instead of micro OLED, they were going for a field sequential LCD. Field sequential color basically works like this. Instead of having three red, green, or blue subpixels for every pixel to make the illusion of color, they actually have one pixel that can do all three colors and they flash it 
really fast to the point where your eyes kind of mixes it together based on the driving of the display. And you kind of are supposed to feel this is red, this is blue, this is green, or whatever variation of that based on how they flash those colors. It's really complicated, but it kind of gives you better yields normally, um, sort of a better, easier to make high resolutions for LCD and a smaller form factor. But I will say this display did not look that good to me. There were some stuck pixels that were clearly not switching. They were stuck on black. And there was, seemed to be what looked to be like a Mura pattern for this LCD. Um, it was very high resolution, but still, compared to all the other displays at the table, when you go from the micro LED um, to the mobile micro LED, then the super thin optics, and you go to this giant field sequential LCD, you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want this last one. Uh, take it away from me, BOE. But the one thing I really want to note before I go into other displays at this conference, because 4K per eye definitely was the big thing that everyone wanted to show off this year. Uh, BOE is a huge manufacturer. They're a very large Chinese company. In fact, they make the displays in the Valve Index, the Quest 2, Quest Pro, pretty much most VR headsets today. And the fact that you're seeing them showing these products off, uh, listing them on their website, means that they're very close to mass producing these displays for any large company that wants to go in and partner and make an order for them. Which means that you're probably going to see these displays very soon. Now there was a couple other companies showing off 4K displays that I really do want to touch on real quick. Now the next one was from a company called Sia Tech. In fact, they are the provider of the displays in the big screen beyond. Uh, they were showing off their own 3.5K by 3.5K resolution. I don't say 4K by 4K because theirs was a little bit smaller resolution than the actual um, BOE. However, the interesting thing about their display is the fact that they're not only just giving samples to people now for mass production, with also dual stack and micro lens arrays to get 4,000 nits, they're doing variable refresh rate with the display, which means they can go from a range of 30 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz with that display, depending on the driving mechanism. And this is probably to save power and do some weird tricks with reprojection. However, it didn't look as good when I saw it uh, compared to the BOE. It, it definitely is a smaller company, Ciotech, compared to BOE, so they don't have the resources to go in. But the display still looked really good, um, and it does technically go up to a higher refresh rate than the one from BOE, which only goes up to 90 hertz. But it was really exciting to see not only BOE with a micro LED display around 4K per eye, but also Ciotech, who already is supplying displays for especially the smaller players who cannot afford to work with big companies like BOE. It was nice to see that. Now finally there was one more 4K per eye display that I feel like I have to kind of talk about and this one uh, is another LCD. Now instead of field sequential display this was actually a full real RGB red green blue subpixel LCD display from a company called Inalux. Uh, it also had a mini LED backlight however this even though it was 4K per eye and it was around the same actual panel size as the Quest Pro, it still had a noticeable amount of screen door effect, I noticed. Now, now don't, don't get me wrong, it was extremely clear, and they even were brave enough to put up text imaging when you put your eyes into it to see how crisp the text was, but you will still see the actual like lines between the subpixels with the LCD display compared to the micro OLED displays that I saw earlier. Which really tells me that even with LCD, them, them trying to push to keep up with micro LED, I'm not sure how well that's going to work. And you know, this is their, this was the other way to, for LCDs to get that 4K per eye. BOE tried field sequential color, Intellux is trying full R, real RGB, and they both just don't look as good as the micro LEDs. Obviously they don't have the contrast ratios and all that other stuff, but it was really happy for me to see that the big focus from a lot of these large and small companies at this display event was we need 4K per eye to have a good VR experience, whether it's for work, productivity, uh, gaming, entertainment, media, whatever. And if you are unsure if we're going to see any of these products soon or any headsets with this resolution, the Apple headset, which is about 100% going to be announced in literally like 12 days from this video being recorded, uh, has been pretty much said for a couple years now that Sony is going to be supplying 4K per eye micro LED and that headset. And if Apple knows how to do one thing amazingly, it's always been choosing the right display or getting the right display made for their products. So if you couldn't see it at this show, 
Maybe when they have the Apple Store demos for that headset after the announcement, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about because it truly is like a almost life-changing experience seeing something that crisp and almost too real <laughs> compared to what we've had for the last seven years for consumer VR, even if it might be pretty expensive at the beginning. But that's it for this video. The next video will be about a company called Hypervision where they had a 240 degrees pancake stitched pancake optics thing and it wasn't giant like Pimax, it was really small. Yeah, I'll talk all about that next video. Bye!